Happy Thanksgiving! Yeah, Canadian Thanksgiving is a month before America's. We had, you know, like we had different pilgrims who arrived a month early, we had beaver instead of turkey. There's a few differences. Those rumors a few weeks back about Nvidia releasing an RTX 3090 Super were apparently wrong. So what's Nvidia actually doing? Producing more stock of budget and mid-tier cards for hungry gamers? Oh, no, no, the, the, it's just the name that was wrong. Uh, okay, that rumored card is actually going to be the RTX 3090 Ti. Ti, not Super, it's very, very different. This is all according to leaked specs, which claim the 3090 Ti will unsurprisingly feature massive performance thanks to more cores, a 450 watt TDP, that's 100 watts more than the 3090, and a PCI Express 5.0 power connector capable of delivering up to 600 watts. The leaked information indicates a January launch, no pricing info yet, but I wouldn't worry too much about all that, as I'm pretty sure you'd need to sell some vital organs in order to get one. <laughs> Please do not do this. We don't need people selling body parts. Epic Games appealed the judge's ruling in their lawsuit against Apple almost as soon as it came out, but Apple actually seemed pretty happy with it. They described it as a resounding victory. Well, Cupertino's had a while to think about the ramifications of the ruling, which requires Apple to allow app developers to include buttons or links to alternative payment methods, and the company has now decided, you know, you know what? We're all we're all appealing. You guys, you guys appealing? You appealing, Emily? Okay. <laughs> the new policy was supposed to take effect December 9th, but Apple's claiming that's not enough time to work through the complex and rapidly evolving legal, technological, and economic issues at play here. It's a button, Apple. Just, 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 just let them put a button in. To be fair though, because the judge did largely affirm Apple's vision of the App Store, even if Apple ends up allowing those third-party payment options, they might be entitled to a cut of the payment anyways, making the whole thing very confusing. And yes, I'm making a tech logger about this. It's just taking a very long time. This is the, the names. Hey, more Google Pixel 6 leaks. This time word is spreading about a Pixel Pass subscription that not only would include the phone itself, but a bundle of Google services, YouTube Premium, Play Pass, and Google One, with the latter including perks like extra cloud storage and advanced photo editing. Subscribers would also get an extended warranty and the possibility of annual hardware upgrades. That way, Google gets more monthly revenue and makes it more difficult for people to switch phones, which I guess is a good thing for Google. The news comes after more leaks from This Is Tech Today claiming the Pixel 6 will be more of a value phone at an MSRP around 750 US dollars, while the 6 Pro will go for $1,040. There's only one week to go until Google's official reveal, making it a race against time to see who will reveal everything about the phones first. At this point, it's like the marriage has already happened, and that event will just be signing the certificate, which is kind of fun, but it's like, now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Volta's Giga Charger, which can help you clean up your desk and declutter your workspace by charging four devices simultaneously. They're doing what the EU is trying to do to Apple, consolidate. The Giga comes with either 130 watt or 200 watt configurations and is compatible with all fast charging capable devices. Accordingly, for a device that's all about fast charging, Volta uses express worldwide shipping and comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So check out the Volta Giga Charger at the link down below. Quick bits? Oh man, they're just, oh, they are just so darn quick. Like, if they could. Reports indicate that Sony and Taiwan's TSMC are thinking about taking their relationship to the next level and building a chip fab together in Japan, which would be subsidized by the Japanese government. Sony doesn't think the chip shortage is going to be over until 2023 at the earliest, so having that additional capacity in Japan would be helpful in case the geopolitical showdown between China, Taiwan, and the US somehow affects TSMC's operations in Taiwan itself. I'm guessing none of those powers are going to be invited to the wedding. This is an elopement. That's what this is. Chipmaker Ampere has announced the successor to their Ultra line of ARM-based enterprise processors. The new Ultra Max M12830 with a whopping 128 cores seems to obliterate AMD's and Intel's competing chips and cloud computing workloads, but in other memory intensive situations, it actually does worse. So while ARM chips are gaining ground, you might wanna wait a bit before you install one of these in your server farm that you statistically don't own. China's crypto crackdown has no end in sight as the country may soon implement restrictions or bans on investing in cryptocurrency mining in addition to its existing ban on mining itself. But the good news for investors is that Bitcoin is still surging at the moment despite China's anti-crypto maneuvers. Because technology is only cool when it lets you control people more. 
Facial recognition? Great, install it everywhere. Blockchain stuff? Gross. Ew. I want my fingers in there. <laughs> Facebook and Instagram have announced it will take new measures to protect younger users in the wake of a whistleblower's report claiming that Instagram recommended harmful content to teens, such as content promoting eating disorders. Users will be nudged to look at something else or to just take a break from the platform completely, apparently using the incredibly successful Don't Do Drugs campaigns from the 90s. Posting carefully curated pictures of the fancy hotel I'm staying in on my vacation? Nah, <laughs> I'm good, thanks. And do you remember Sony's Play at Home campaign last year, which gave away free games during the height of the pandemic? Sony recently revealed that over 60 million games were handed out without cost to PlayStation owners. Of course, it's pretty clearly a strategy to build goodwill towards the PlayStation brand, but on the other hand, free games. That's it for this episode, guys. Come back on Wednesday for more tech news. That is, if you're not still knocked unconscious from all that delicious turkey and beaver mash. Don't eat beaver. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs>